I just wanted to know about um, rape or incest and would you accept that in those cases abortion is necessary? That's a really, really important point. I was uh, chatting on the phone to um, the BBC researcher on the same question, and I said to her, you know, the funny thing is, it's not that funny, but that um, women uh, who have been raped are often the person not asking for the abortion, but their family members. And the second thing is that when you've had the trauma of rape, which is probably one of the worst experiences a person can go through, through research and through speaking to people personally who've had these uh, experiences and then an abortion afterwards to so-called heal the rape or get rid of the consequences of it, many of them found the abortion more traumatizing than the rape itself. So it's not an easy thing. And when I got off the phone, my new housemate, she was brand new, I didn't really know anything about her, she'd been listening to the phone call, and she said, oh my God, I've never heard anyone dare to say that. She said, um, I haven't told anyone in the house yet, but um, my mum, uh, I don't know her, but uh, she was basically a victim of sexual abuse repeatedly by a member of my dad's family, friend, circle of friends. Um, she became pregnant at 14, and I was, um, and she was told by her family, so it fitted in with the story, to have an abortion. She refused to do so. So they said they would throw her out. She said, fine. They said, look, okay, you can have it, but give it away. She said, fine. And so Cassie, my friend, was brought up. She's a black girl. She was brought up by white parents, and I've since met them. So Cassie is a tremendously talented, amazing, gorgeous person, writes screenplays and fashion designs, and is amazing. Her mother is a heroic character to my mum. And I think that it's important to remember that abortion, whatever I might say, is a trauma for the body. The mind might think it's not going to be a trauma, but it is a trauma for the body. And that this situation of rape and followed by um, abortion is not a healing answer. Many people who've had uh, children after rape have said that that's the one good thing that came out of that appalling situation. So that would be my preliminary answer, and it certainly isn't an easy answer to give, but there's much evidence to show that it's not a ridiculous answer. Thank you. We'll have one more question for her, and then move over to the other side. Sir. Yes, um, I'm very sorry, but that's not actually an answer to the question that in relation to the general topic of the debate, whether or not it is a right or a rights violation. You've explained why uh, abortion after rape or incest may be an incredibly traumatic experience, but I mean, lots of things that we have a right to do could be hypothetically traumatic experiences. Could you possibly say whether you would nevertheless allow someone to have the right after an incestuous affair or an abortion, or, sorry, or, um, or a situation of rape to then have an abortion despite the difficulties that they may or may not have afterwards because we can't know? Very good question. Well, to go back to the point when you say, would you allow someone to have the right? I think what's important here is we're trying to think about, does this right exist? It's not a question of saying, do I, Sarah Chernobyl, would I allow somebody to have that right? I, I apologise, it's just that you as the spokesperson for the rights violation is what yes, I'm saying. Yes, no, you're absolutely right to bring it up, because it's the, it is the point. It is the point, you're absolutely right. Is, does that unborn child who has been produced by the rape, have a right, intrinsically or not, that is the question, and does the mother or the father or the family instead have the right to get rid of it because of the traumatic circumstances? And I think that the answer to that question I think I've probably answered by considering what is a human being and what is the nature of their dignity no matter how they have been brought into the world. And so Culture, of course, I would say, has to precede lawmaking, although lawmaking often shifts culture. But I would say that it has definitely got to be central, the question of what is human life, and if life leads to rights, because it, in its own being exists, we cannot just say, you have the right to dispose of that child, unless you first ask the question, who is it you are disposing of?